Open the windows. Open the door. All right, lads. Keep your hands where you can see them. Just keep your hands where you can see them, Pa. Put you in some handcuffs. Yeah, what about that side? Just need driver out that side. Yeah, no bother. Just open the door for us. Mate, until they confirm your identity, we'll put you in handcuffs. What's your name, fella? Joseph. Eh? Joseph. Tom's just getting driver out and all three will be sick here. On suspicion of murder, okay. You don't have to say anything. I am a defence, you don't mention my questions. Some future later on in court, and it's just in the car, um, to me, to me. 29 year old Joseph Pierce and 41 year old James Witham were arrested for the murder of 28 year old Ashley Dale 23 days after the incident on the old Swan estate in Liverpool, United Kingdom. The investigation initially seemed challenging, but detectives from the Merseyside police acted swiftly to solve the case preventing it from becoming Liverpool's latest unsolved murder. Despite living a comfortable life away from crime, Ashley Dale tragically had her door kicked in and faced a hitman's indiscriminate gunfire while watching TV with her dog. Let's delve into it. Let's take a deep dive into this case then and see how two best friends turned rivals caused the death of an innocent woman. To begin, we've got to head over to the Glastonbury Festival, a five-day festival that some of the most famous artists have touched down to perform there. Roughly 200,000 people visit every year, and in 2022, 28-year-old council worker Ashley Dale attended as she had done many times before. That year, she headed down to the festival with her boyfriend Lee Harrison, a known Merseyside organized crime gang member. The pair were also with two friends, but only one is relevant to the story. Jordan Thompson, also an organized crime gang member. We'll call this group Group One. Also in attendance was organized crime gang member Sean Zeiss and his girlfriend Olivia McDowell. Although the pair headed down to Glastonbury by themselves, they were both associated with Group One, and throughout their time at the festival, they crossed paths with them. We'll call this pair Group Two. Ian Fitzgibbon, Olivia's cousin, and his girlfriend were also in attendance, and just like Group 2, they made their own way down to Glastonbury. Throughout their time at the festival, they crossed paths with Group 1 and 2. Then there's Group 4. This group consists of high-ranking organized crime gang member and arms dealer, Niall Barry, James Witham, and a few others that are irrelevant to the story. Niall had connections with everyone in the other groups except for Lee Harrison and Jordan Thompson. However, their friendship hadn't always been distant especially in 2018 when they were considered best friends and partners in drug trafficking until a significant theft occurred. Approximately 40,000 pounds worth of cocaine and cannabis vanished from Niall's stash house, allegedly orchestrated by the Hillsiders, a local criminal syndicate. Lee, believed to be associated with them, severed ties with Niall, possibly due to suspicions that Niall had been swindling him. This rift hinted at a looming retaliation given Niall's prominence in the criminal landscape of Merseyside. After the robbery, years passed without any significant developments. Niall purportedly relocated to North Wales to manage a county line and engage in trading illegal firearms. Despite occasional encounters with Lee upon his return to Liverpool, no confrontation ensued. However, tensions escalated during Glastonbury 2022, when interactions between their respective groups reignited the feud. An altercation between Sean Zeiss and Jordan Thompson over Lee's involvement in the 2018 robbery sparked the conflict further, culminating in Sean's assault and subsequent fallout with his girlfriend, Olivia. The following day, she broke up with him and started a fling with Jordan Thompson at Glastonbury. Niall capitalized on the incident to confront Lee, marking a notable departure from their previous avoidance of conflict, possibly due to their shared social circles maintaining peace until then. After Sean's confrontation with Lee led to his assault, Niall's pursuit of vengeance intensified. Armed and determined, Niall sought out Lee at Glastonbury as recounted by Ian, a witness to their encounter. Despite Niall's threat of violence, no further altercations occurred between the parties involved. Sean, though aware of Olivia's presence with Group 1 post-assault, remained silent. Meanwhile, Lee remained unperturbed by Niall's armed pursuit, opting to enjoy the festival instead. However, on the fourth day, Niall and James Witham's plans were disrupted when they encountered police while en route to Glastonbury, though the reasons for their detour remain undisclosed. Got on top here, 
Please believe I'm going to have drugs on you. We're in the vehicle, okay? So I'm detaining you for a search. I'm piecing up enough arms for you, but it's soon out, okay? So you want to have James has got £700 in cash on him, oh, but that's below the threshold. Oh, hello, Mr. Niall. Yeah, that'll do. That'll come in. I think that was it, to be fair. Niall, time is 25 2, mate. You're going to be arrested under suspicion of possession of that, okay? Is it? That's on my bag. It's in your bag with your passport in it, okay? Yeah, you, I, I've just showed that to you before, my passport was in this bag. Uh, so yeah, don't say anything about me, I'm in defence, do not mention any questions, think you later on in the court, anything you do say, maybe give it an evidence, alright? That's, that's not my bag. It's got your passport in it. Ashton, you, you grabbed all my stuff before. Hmm? Ashton, you grabbed all my stuff before. Is it just one bag? No, there's, no, there's my, two my, bags. My bag, my bag, the carrier bag, the white bag. With all, with all the clothes in. Mm. I did say straight away that his passport's going to be in his mate's bag. I did say that, but yeah, I did say that. I should have been in his mate's bag. I should have been in his mate's bag. You're under arrest for now, okay? Until we've got him out. It's your bag, is it? Say again? The big blue hole door. Yeah, yeah. Again? There's ketamine in there, is there? Where else is it? He's saying there's some ketamine in the bag. I didn't find any. You know his bag? The blue one? That one? That's yours? Okay. Right, okay. So, I'm going to arrest you then. That's suspicion of possession of this, okay? So, do you not have to say anything about my harm and defense? Do you not mention any questions? Think about it, right? Or, okay? Anything you do say, maybe give an evidence. Obviously, this is a lock knife, right? So, it's, you're under arrest and you've just got a bladed article. Where's the cat's in here then? I've searched the bag and I can't find any ketamine. What was it in? It's your driving license in your bag. Yeah, it's <coughs> So it's the, the other guy, the gentleman makes a cap, he's going to do it his bag. And oh. the guy whose passport it was in it is denying it's his bag, saying oh, okay. it's his mate's bag. Oh well, and it's on tape, so. Yeah. To be fair, I think as soon as, to be fair to Niall, the other bloke, yeah. as soon as he's been stopped, he sort of said, like, my passport's in that bag, but nothing else in there is mine. Oh, okay. And the other chap's like, yeah, that's my bag. Oh, okay. his, his passport's in it, so. Um, I didn't know the one first, because I thought it was his. But yeah, well, he's, he's got, got a passport yeah, there. He's got, no, no, it's not mine. Yeah, with Glastonbury's conclusion, everyone dispersed to resume their routines, except for one individual profoundly affected by the events. The looming threats made during the festival cast a shadow of fear, particularly on Ashley Dale, whose anxiety intensified upon learning of Niall's pursuit of Lee. The constant reminder of potential danger, even if not directly targeting her, consumed her thoughts. Compounding her distress, Niall's direct communication with Lee, promising a visit to their shared home address, exacerbated Ashley's unease, leaving her unable to find solace in the aftermath of Glastonbury, as her texts prove. It's just giving me bad anxiety. I just feel like I'm constantly worrying and something's going to happen. He's being threatened by Niall and all like that. Is he going to end up doing something to Lee? I just couldn't cope with that. Niall is saying he's going to come and do something. He was saying he was going to come down and he never came down. I just think if he's going to do something, would he not give him any warning? ICBA with it. 
I don't want to have to go to Lee's funeral next, and I just have a bad, bad feeling about everything MOL. Proper stressed out all the time, my nerves are gone, when I'm out in the car with Lee just feeling like I'm looking over my shoulder all the time. So I'm so sorry to report that over the course of the weekend at around half past midnight on the early hours of Sunday morning, police were called to Leinster Road, reported for shooting. Uh, at that location we found that the property had been forcefully entered, multiple shots had been fired and a young lady uh, who we now know to be Ashley Dale uh, had been shot and fatally wounded and unfortunately despite the best efforts of Merseyside Police and the North West Ambulance Service she succumbed to those injuries. We are supporting her family at this incredibly difficult time. Ashley was a lovely young woman with a career in front of her, worked for Knowsley Council uh, and had recently graduated and had a promotion at work. She was in her own home and should have been safe at that time. The people responsible for this attack are subject to our investigation and we need to do everything we can to identify who they are. They have no place in our society or our communities. They had no regard for Ashley or the law or the community and I appeal to anyone with any information whatsoever or evidence around this to come forward, contact us directly, Crime Stoppers or through our major incident portal on the website. At 11.40 p.m. on August 20th, 2022, a grey Hyundai was captured on CCTV as it approached Ashley Dale's residence on Leinster Road in Liverpool's Old Swan neighbourhood. Upon arrival, two individuals disembarked and proceeded to slash the tyres of Ashley's white Volkswagen T-Rock. Their attempts to lure occupants outside were futile as no one responded. Inside, Ashley remained with her dog, attributing the disturbance to the rain-triggered alarm and refrained from investigating. Almost an hour later, the assailants returned this time wielding a military-grade Scorpion machine pistol. Bursting into the living room, the gunman confronted Ashley, who fled towards the back garden via the kitchen. Despite her efforts to escape, she was struck once in the abdomen by gunfire. Her dog was also targeted, sustaining injuries. After discharging multiple rounds, the gunman retreated, leaving behind a scene of terror and devastation. I've just heard a loud noise in the back. I've stood on my back wall and the house immediately to the back of us. There's a lady lying there in shorts and a t-shirt and she's groaning. She's lying in the backyard on her back. She looks like she's struggling. Please, if there's anyone here, make yourself known! Officers with tasers. Back door's open. Is it? Yeah. Chris, you've got tasers on since the lead, mate. I'm gonna walk through. Back door is open. Right. Please. Yeah, the back. Is that last patrol on the road? Upon police arrival, they encountered Ashley Dale's residence riddled with bullets. Amidst the chaos, officers discovered Ashley's traumatized dog, fortunately unharmed. However, Ashley herself was not as fortunate. Despite emergency efforts, her catastrophic injuries proved fatal. Consequently, a murder investigation commenced, initially posing challenges due to the historical reluctance of Liverpool locals to cooperate with law enforcement. Nevertheless, recent shifts in public cooperation facilitated progress in the case. Shortly after Ashley's death, Informants implicated James Witham as the suspected gunman. Interestingly, Ashley wasn't the intended target. Her boyfriend, Lee Harrison, was. Lee's refusal to aid the investigation into his girlfriend's murder contrasted starkly with his reassurances to Ashley's family of his innocence in the matter. Despite Lee Harrison's reluctance to cooperate with the investigation, police found Ashley Dale's own communication devices to be instrumental in uncovering crucial evidence. Text messages and voice notes retrieved from her phone provided a timeline linking back to the 2018 drug robbery, establishing revenge as the motive behind her murder. According to police, James Witham and Joseph Pierce were dispatched to assassinate Lee on orders from Niall Barry and Sean Zeiss, seeking retribution for the robbery and the Glastonbury incident. With all four suspects identified, police moved to make arrests, encountering difficulty as all but Sean fled the area. Sean, apprehended a week later, initially denied involvement, 
but later expressed disgust at the events and asserted his innocence, opting not to evade authorities. Following the murder, Joseph Piers and James Witham proceeded to the Mercure Hotel in St. Helens. They spent one night there, indulging in the spa facilities, before checking out on the morning of August 22, 2022. Their activities on the 22nd remain unclear, but in the early hours of the subsequent morning, they seemingly fled to Scotland, likely in an attempt to evade police pursuit. Law enforcement struggled to trace their movements during their time in Scotland. However, by September 13th, authorities received intelligence suggesting their return journey to Liverpool in an Audi Q7. This prompted their imminent arrest. The door. All right, lads, keep your hands where you can see him. Just keep your hands where I can see him, Paul. Yeah. put you in some handcuffs. Yeah, what about that side? Just need to drive around that side. Yeah, no bother. Just yeah. open the door for us. Yeah. Mate, until we confirm your identity, yeah. we will put you in handcuffs. What's your name, fella? Joseph. Eh? Joseph. 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 Tom's just getting drive out. No, it's really disappeared. Arrest on suspicion of murder. Okay. You don't have to say anything. I am a defence. You don't mention my questions. Some people later on in court. And it's just in the car, um, um, just me, shooting me. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Just going to put you in cuffs, mate. All right. What's your name, fella? Francis. Say that again. Francis Kelly. Gary, Francis. Gary Francis. Francis, Francis Gary. Francis Gary. Right. Kelly. Ke Kelly. 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 It's all right. My ears, your. Right, we'll walk over here, fella. You got anything on you? You shouldn't. No. Anything in the vehicle that you shouldn't be. Yeah. James? Right, okay, you're under arrest for a suspicion of murder. All right, you don't have to say anything. The May Army Defence, you don't mention my questions. I'm sure they're not in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. All right. What, whatever time was now, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll come over here, we'll sit behind my vehicle. It's confirmed that he is, James. On August 24, 2022, three days post the murder, Niall packed his belongings and departed for the Formby Hall Golf and Spa Resort in Formby, situated approximately an hour away from the Heighton Flat. All four men faced charges including murder in connection to Ashley Dale, conspiracy to murder Lee Harrison, and conspiracy to possess a prohibited weapon with intent to endanger life. Despite initial denials, they proceeded to trial. Just prior to the trial, James Witham admitted to being the gunman, but claimed it was manslaughter as he didn't intend to shoot Ashley. However, the prosecution rejected his plea, leading to a seven-week trial from October to November 2023. While the other defendants distanced themselves from the murder, James portrayed the shooting as reckless and unintended, expressing remorse for the harm caused. Joseph Pierce claimed no involvement in the incident, asserting he had no part in the events leading up to the shooting, including the Glastonbury altercation and the drug robbery. Sean Zeiss maintained he was at the Hutton flat watching sports and denied any motive for targeting Lee, 
citing Lee's intervention during the Glastonbury altercation as evidence of their amicable relationship. Niall insisted he was at the flat with others and denied any plan to harm Lee. Despite their defenses, the jury convicted all defendants on all charges. At 11.40 p.m. on the 20th of August last year, a Hyundai car drove into Leinster Road in Old Swan, Liverpool. Inside were two men, James Witham and Joseph Piers. They drove there as a result of a criminal agreement with Niall Barry and Sean Zeiss to kill the occupants of 40 Leinster Road using a Scorpion submachine gun. They each knew that Lee Harrison lived there with his partner, Ashley Dale. It was their home. The car had been acquired in the days leading up to what happened, with false number plates ready to use when the hiding of the car followed. In an attempt to bring the occupants out of the house, Witham and Piers stabbed the car tyres of the car parked outside. That set off the car alarm. Inside the house was Ashley Dale in her pyjamas watching television. When she heard the alarm, she believed it was caused by heavy rain and so she stayed inside. Outside, Witham and Piers waited for their moment for this planned killing. What followed was a murder of such seriousness that it has shocked both the local community and many in this country. The use of a military-grade submachine gun to kill a young woman in her own home at night in a planned shooting of the occupants of that house is beyond any understanding. At just after half past midnight, Witham got out of the Hyundai car wearing a balaclava to hide his face. He carried that Scorpion submachine gun loaded with 15 bullets. He broke through the locked front door, walked into the dining room. Ashley was in that room alone, moving towards the kitchen back door to escape, and there were lights on so that she was visible. Witham wickedly fired 10 bullets towards her, as she was vulnerable and defenceless. One of those bullets passed through her abdomen and killed her. Her screams were heard by neighbours. Leaving her to die, Witham went upstairs looking for Lee Harrison. In a bedroom, he fired a further five bullets into the wall as a clear statement that if he had been in the house, he would have been killed also. After the shooting, Witham and Piers drove away. The car was parked elsewhere, out of view, and later that day to be hidden on the driveway of a property in St Helens. A week later, it was driven by Piers and Zeiss to be hidden on another driveway in St Helens until it was discovered by the police on the 9th of October. Ashley Dale died very shortly after she was shot. <coughs> Lee Harrison has refused to cooperate in the police investigation into her murder. So involved with criminal drug dealing gangs is he. For the family of Ashley Dale, this must have been a cruel twist to the tragic loss of their daughter and sister. Not only was she brutally killed in her own home, but Lee Harrison has refused to assist the police to bring her killers to justice. Stand up. I sentence each of you to imprisonment for life on count one for the murder of Ashley Dale. Niall Barry on count one, murder. Your minimum term is increased to 35 years, but must be further increased to reflect your offending in counts two, three, and in the second indictment. Your minimum term is 47 years, less 433 days served on remand. James Witham on count one, murder, your minimum term is also increased to 35 years, but must be further incre increased to reflect your offending on counts two and three. Your minimum term is 43 years, less 295 days served on remand. Joseph Pears on count one, murder, your minimum term is increased to 33 years, but must be further increased to reflect your offending in counts two and three. Your minimum term is 41 years, less 295 days served on remand. Sean Zeiss, 
on count one murder, your minimum term is increased to 32 years, but must be further increased to reflect your offending in counts two and three and the second indictment, your minimum term is 42 years, less 448 days served on remand. On count two, conspiracy to murder, I impose a concurrent sentence of imprisonment for life on each of you, with a minimum term of 18 years custody. On count three, conspiracy to possess a prohibited firearm and ammunition with intent to endanger life, I impose a concurrent sentence of 14 years imprisonment on each of you. The sentences on the second indictment of 30 years imprisonment for you, Barry, and 10 years for you, Zeiss, will also be served concurrently. You will each be required to pay the statutory charge, but in your cases, Zeiss and Barry, I postpone the making of the order until the conclusion of the confiscation proceedings under the Proceeds of Crime Act 2002. In your cases, Piers and Witham, I make the surcharge order now, which will be in the appropriate amount and set out in the court order. Take them down. Ian Fitzgibbon faced trial on the same charges, but was acquitted, expressing jubilation at the courtroom verdict, likely due to his close relationship with Ashley and Lee. During the trial, he emphasized his friendship with Lee and indicated he wouldn't partake in a plot against a close friend. That is it for today's video. Like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.